Well, Buntimus Prime, to start out this week's show, I have got a big treat, okay? All I right. did a ton of research. I did a ton of research for this first bit. I went to like a bajillion websites, Mental Floss, Atlas, Obscura, Cracked. I also read a bunch of articles, books about the subject, and so I am well-versed, okay, in this topic. Okay. I am a professional when it comes to this topic. So buckle up, listeners, because this is going to be a fun, informative, and lengthy bit that you're all going to really, really like, okay? So let me just, hold on, let me just get, <clears throat> well, listeners, if you think you know all there is to know about the topic of ice cream, then you are probably right. <laughs> there is not much. To the topic of ice cream. It's just fucking ice cream. Mm -hmm. And it comes in different flavors. And that's about it. I mean, come on. Anyway, next segment. Before we go any <laughs> further. Before we get any further into this amazing podcast, I would like to take a bit of a pause with our usual shenanigans to touch on the topic that is very much near and dear to us here on the show. We are once again going to be talking about... Uh, Shitting on Christians. Yes. Yay! That's yes. basically our podcast's pa pastime, really. <laughs> That's our show's pastime. Anyway, as a public service to our great, wonderful, and no doubt mentally disturbed listeners out there, we are going to be teaching you, the listener, how to talk like a Christian. Yes. And you Specific need to you need to pay attention because this could save your life. Exactly, exactly. Specifically, we will be learning how to talk like an American Christian. Okay, not just like a Christian, but like an American Christian. And it's pretty sad that I have to make that distinction, but it's necessary. Honestly, I think that a, a foreign Christian. If you got a foreign Christian somewhere from some foreign country, that that yeah. foreign Christian would in no way recognize your typical American Christian. No, because if you were a Christian in in um a, a predominantly Islamic country, your you, how you talk in that country is more like, "Please don't kill me." It's very yeah. it's very different. Yeah. Than yeah. than the nuanced. Uh, stylings of yeah. an American Christian. Yeah. See, in foreign nations and far off lands, a Christian is basically a good Samaritan. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a kind, selfless sort of person who, you know, helps the poor and the sick and gives of themselves to mm -hmm. those out there that are less fortunate. Whereas an American Christian is a 58 year old woman named Carlene with a K and three E's and who a has little a heart over the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Who has a Jennifer Aniston haircut and six kids that she absolutely fucking hates. And every Sunday they pile into their expensive SUV and drive past hungry, homeless people on their way to the life faith incorporated mega church in town. Mm -hmm. Not and feel God's presence, but because Carlene can't wait to see Becky Amherst's smug face when she sees the boob job and Botox that her plastic surgeon gave her because she has been a stuck-up bitch that Becky Amherst ever since the bake sale. So it's Carlene's time to shine! In fact, Carlene is so self-centered in her Christianity that she has absolutely no clue that her perfect husband, Dale, has been having a secret gay affair with his longtime golfing buddy, Mike Bradford, for almost nine years now. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, Dale and Mike have been going off on the weekends to put balls in holes, but there has been very little golf involved. <laughs> and that is not even mentioning Carlene's six kids, which, without mentioning names for legal reasons, includes one kid that cuts, one that sets fires, one that trades nudes with the boys in her class, and one that's planning something, something big. But mm. you'll see. You'll all see. <laughs> and that is Christianity in America. Yes. But, uh, and this is something that I, 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 I know from experience, there are times 
when you may have to fake being Christian in order to fit into society or secure a good job you, or you may or need to blend not, in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or to not be lynched. Yes. Uh, welcome, welcome to Oklahoma. Or even to maintain a happy facade in the eyes of others. And this is true. I have a friend who will remain nameless. Her husband has a very important job in town, and all eyes are on them in this small-ass town in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. So this fair is somewhat well-off and secretly atheist family will soon be picking a church and faking Christianity so that the entire town doesn't flip the fuck out and, like, stone them at the town square. <laughs> oh, God. And, interesting side note, I'm pretty sure I just described an unreleased episode of Gilmore Girls. Yes. Yes, Max. I've, I've heard about that. Oh, what we Maxwell, my son Maxwell, says we have a a, a, a special guest. Wow, there's a special guest here. Uh, yeah, he, he he got stuck in Minecraft. Oh, he got stuck in Minecraft. He got stuck in your craft. No, oh. Minecraft. Oh, so he got stuck in your craft. Well, I'm sorry that he was stuck <laughs> in your craft. No, Minecraft. Okay, okay, okay. Well, you know, some people say that it's everybody's craft, but okay, your craft. He got stuck in your... Yes, your craft. Minecraft. Oh, Minecraft. Okay, I thought you were saying your craft, like My Little Ponies. It's like, sorry, I don't want your freaking ponies. So, who is is this guest? Uh, It's a wrestler. It's a wrestler. And do you know what his name is? Sam Punk. CM Punk, way to remember. Yeah. Wait, good job, Maxwell. That's CM Punk. Yeah. What does CM Punk have to say? He he does say Okay, he, what is what he has to say something important. Ooh. What does he have to say, Maxwell? Okay, let's speak. I I got in a fight with my my arch enemy. Who's who's your arch enemy, CM Punk? My arch enemy is lava. Lava? Yeah. Wow. The lava wrestler. The oh, the lava wrestler. I thought you meant the actual thing, lava. Like, my arch enemy is bullets. Yes. Yeah. I really need to fight him. He's my arch enemy. Yeah, lava the wrestler. <laughs> that sounds like someone who could have actually been a wrestler like in 1987 and he's like really fat and he dresses all in red and and he and he was so strong he wasn't fat and yeah. he and he could shoot lava oh he can shoot lava okay so so he has magical powers so this is a lucha underground situation then and, wow. and this guy and this guy w cm punk cm punk can can this <laughs> Punch him with water. Oh, can punch him with water. Okay, so he's like a waterbender. So we're talking about some Avatar stuff. Aang and not the blue people who have sex with their hair. <laughs> but I had, heard of, I had heard of that Gilmore Girls episode. It was the episode, yes. and it's been missing forever, and it's yep. only rumors, but I, I had yep. heard that the town suddenly realizes that, you know, Kurt's a little different. Yeah, 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 and they they just get sick of it. They get sick of it, yeah. so they stone him. So that is why we are here today, people, to help you learn how to talk like a Christian could so, save your life. Yeah, especially with the way this country is going, it's remarkable. There haven't really been Christians in charge of the government like fundamentalist extreme right wing fundamentalist Christians it, in this much power since like Reagan in the 80s yeah. so one of the reasons why uh, Donald Trump hasn't been like tarred and feathered and sent to the brink is because he has spent like the last year surrounding himself with a wall of Christians so that all the Christians are like, oh, so he was lying about Russia and he was lying about collusion. Yeah, but Jesus. Yeah. So that's why a, a, a lot. That's why basically Donald Trump hasn't been uh, put in chains yet. Because if it, 
Hillary Clinton had done like one tenth of what Donald Trump has done, she would basically have been beheaded in the town square. And I don't know if you've if you've caught this yet. Uh, probably started in Oklahoma, but I have been seeing it a lot around town uh, that if you are spotted as a Christian and they don't think you're one of them, they'll point and go <sighs> at you, which is really fucking creepy. Yeah, that's basically how it happens. So, uh, yes, Maxwell, you said you said you needed to interrupt the podcast again. Okay, up. Water, up. CM Punk, the water guy, and and lava, the lava wrestler are having a fight. Oh my goodness! Uh, this is a, a award-winning podcasting here, Maxwell. Yeah. So, Bunny, if you want to uh, know what know what what the lava wrestler is doing, he. Do you, do you want to know what Lava Wrestler is doing, Bunny? I, I, I totally don't. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you're asking me to be honest here, no. He's shooting lava from his hand. Oh, he's shooting lava from his hand. Okay. Well, uh, why don't you give us a an update later, okay? Okay, Maxwell? Okay, thank you. So, therefore, without any further ado... Or some ado. I mean, I, I don't want to say without any more ado. And then there's like cup. some ado. Yeah. Like a smidgen of ado. Yeah. Much ado about podcasting. We present Steve's patented three-step plan to help you blend in with Christian America. And trust me on this. I've lived in Oklahoma for like five and a half years. This place is like a white Christian Disney world. So I have a three-step plan at the uh, a three-step plan to help you talk like a Christian, sound like a Christian, blend in with Christian America. Uh, at the end of each step, we're going to be uh, doing some examples, Bunny, and and I'm going to try and get you to sound like a Christian. I think it's it's, okay. it's foolproof. My three-step plan is absolutely foolproof. Is, is there a workbook? No, but I'm working on it. Okay. I'm working on. It. I have a lot of pages here. Step one. When you are talking with another Christian, use I as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Because you are the most important person on earth. You are a <laughs> Christian, which means that you are right and everyone who is not you is wrong. Yes. Okay, so you got to get into this mindset. Only you know what's best for everyone. Only you can set things right. Only your opinion counts. So if only everybody else would just stop talking about themselves and their dumbass problems and listen to what you have to say, then everything would be fine. Then the world would be a better place if everyone just listened to you more and your story and what you have to say. So when you are talking with a Christian, steer any conversation towards yourself. It doesn't matter what the other person is saying. Say, oh, well, you know, my, my son just killed himself yeah he uh was uh doing the auto erotic asphyxiation and he just hung himself in the bathroom mm -hmm. he was just naked except for you know a, a pair of leotards and he just died so so what you would do in that situation is despite the fact that this person is telling you about their dead son you go oh sweetie i know just what you're going through mm-hmm I know how you must be feeling. I am so sorry. Let me tell you what happened to me, because I've been through this. <laughs> Does not matter what anyone is saying. Oh, yeah, you know what? I was just driving to church, and I was just, just rear-ended by a truck that was filled with angry hedgehogs. <laughs> and they piled into my car, and they just started biting my kids in the nuts. If someone says that, still, oh, I know just how you feel. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what happened to me at the mall. Doesn't matter what someone says to you, you turn it back onto yourself. Yes. I know what you're going through. I know uh, how you're feeling. Let me tell you about my thing. Okay. You steer any conversation towards yourself and you do it with a pinch of smugness. Mm -hmm. If you can, 
And also, you know, I think this goes without saying, slight southern accent. Yes. Slight southern accent. So we're going to try... Even in Queens. Yeah, even in Queens. You, you, Mm -hmm. You become like a... It doesn't matter. You're in Jersey. If you're Christian... You have to have a Christian accent, and a Christian accent is slight Southern. Doesn't matter where you are. You could be in Alaska and just, oh man, I need some more whale blubber, honey. Hardly. <laughs> can you can you uh, take the dog sled up to the store and buy me a pop? <laughs> Doesn't matter where you are. You need that Christian Southern accent. So, yes. Bunny, I am going to be talking to you. I'm a Christian. And I'm trying to tell you about my story, and you try step one okay. as much as you can. No matter what I say, you try and, like, uh, judo the conversation back into yourself, okay? Okay. Oh, Bunny, it's so good to see you. You wouldn't believe what happened to me. I was, uh, I, my, my daughter and I were doing a little jog around the neighborhood, and suddenly we were attacked by a naked homeless man. Oh, I, I totally understand what you're going through. I do. I, 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 when I was jogging in that same park, I was homeless and I was running around naked, but thank God the Lord Jesus delivered me from that demon of nakedness. Amen. And I have learned my lesson. And am therefore from that point better than you. Oh, bunny, you passed step one fucking perfectly. That was just gold star right there. Thank you. That was a gold star. Okay. You did very good. It, it's you. all about you. No matter what anyone says to you, this conversation is about you. You did that wonderfully uh, gold star. You get you get you get a muffin basket. So we're gonna move on. To step two, you personally talk to God all of the freaking time. Yes. This is another aspect of American Christianity that non-American Christians would find batshit insane. As a Christian, as an American Christian, you think that you are so important that you literally have constant, regular, one-on-one conversations with the omnipotent, invisible creator of all existence. Mm -hmm. You fucking talk to God. To God, to Jesus, to angels, to a whole host of magical, invisible creatures. You're talking to, uh, you're talking to everybody. You're talking to Hagrid. And yet, society somehow doesn't throw you in an insane asylum for this. Yes. You mm-hmm. regularly have conversations with angels and rebuke demons. All of these invisible creatures in mm-hmm. your bizarre religious mythology. You talk to them and battle yeah. them all the time. And yet, society doesn't throw you in fucking religious Arkham Asylum for your batshit crazy ramblings. Yes. And you have the nerve to laugh at people who play Pokemon Go. Yes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But but the important thing here is not that you talk to God. That's actually the, not the important part of step two. The important thing is that you constantly tell other people about it. Yes. Because talking to God is not about talking to God. Talking to God is about rubbing it in other less pious Christians' faces. Take that, Becky Amherst. Yes. It's or, not or as I like to think of them, people who are trying to take their religion seriously. Yeah. And, and are not casting out demons and talking to people who ain't there. You know? They're, they're yeah. just trying to be good people. But then there's this other one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so talking to God isn't about Talking to God. Talking to God is about letting everyone else know that you talk to God. Yes. Also, technical note, you talk to God about some real trivial shit. <laughs> You're not talking to God about the most important things in the world. Mm-hmm. 
like God is up in heaven on a cloud somewhere saying, well, I was going to end all suffering, but instead I need to go down to earth and talk to Peggy from Idaho about her credit card debt. Yes. So that's the end of step two. Let's do some examples. I'm going to do an example. Like we are two Christians talking together. I'm going to do an example and then you follow up with your own example. Okay, bunny. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> oh, bunny. It's so good to see you. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Okay. Let me tell you what happened to me. Okay. I tell you, I just wasn't sure what private school to send Jacob to. I just was not sure. So this is what I did. Okay. I, 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 I went home. I got on my knees and I prayed on it. I prayed on it. And then the Lord came to me. The Lord came to me and spoke to me and said, Peggy, he said, let it go. He said, and that's when I knew that's when I just knew I had to send Jacob to, to the Arendelle school of the frozen and gifted. Yes. And that's it. Like, and then I said, "Thank you, Lord." And then we uh, we just uh, talked about um, Chris Stapleton music. <laughs> it was amazing. I just felt the Lord's presence. The Lord put His hands on me, and then gave me the a, a sensual back massage. <laughs> Oh, praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus, Maxwell. Praise Jesus. I said praise Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. What about you, Bunny? What have you been doing? Well, I, 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 I feel this moving of my heart mm. that... Jesus wants me to tell you something very, very mm. important. Mm. Amen. Jesus told me that you need to know and you need to understand the importance of a reverse mortgage yeah. mm. in mm. these Amen. trying times. Because we are in the last days and these are oh. the tribulations. Oh, amen. Ho, Baba Kanda. And, and the Lord is going to rapture us soon, which means you will no longer need your house. So amen. you need to get yourself a reverse. And I can get you a reverse mortgage right now if you so decide. But we will pay you in monthly payments for your house and buy it back from you. Um, Jesus did not tell me what I need with your house, but th this word is for you. Jesus told me to tell you this. Mm. Okay. So this is your very mm. own special blessing. Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. And then when the rapture comes, you will have been living in style and then you will just no longer because then you'll be with the Lord and you won't need your house and you won't need your cars and you won't need your DVD players oh, and, and all the other things of this world. Your Blu-rays and your Walkmans. No, no. You, you print your name on the top line. And then you sign on the bottom. Oh, amen. Amen. Yes. Okay. Let me tell you what I'm going to, let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray on it. I'm going to, I'm going to call Jesus up on the Jesus phone. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yes, I'm going to talk to my husband, Dale. He, he's not here right now. He's off golfing with his buddy. They're golfing all the time. Yeah. They're just always golfing. You know how men are. <laughs> He didn't know how men are. They just got to get on the lanes and just grab their uh, clubs and just yeah. and just whack away, <laughs> whack away at them balls. You just you know how men are. Uh, yes, Maxwell. What am I looking at? What am I looking at? A pile at? of robots. A pile of robots. I believe that that's called a flock of robots. That's actually a band. I saw them in '89. They were amazing. 
they kind of stuck to the classics. <laughs> so um, that was really good, Bunny. That was really good. I really felt the the spirit of Jesus there. <laughs> you did very good with step two. I like the fact how not only did you make it about yourself, not only did you mention how much you talked to God, but also you tried to get me to do something that I didn't want to do mm-hmm. to help you financially. That's very Christian. <laughs> It's very Christian, so you're doing very good. Now we're on to step three. This is my favorite step, and I've been working on this so hard. I've been literally, for the past like two weeks, I've been listening to so much Christian talk radio. And uh, not just not just Christian talk radio. I've been hitting the AM radio hard. Okay. Okay. I've been, I've been hearing uh, preachers and pastors and sermons up the ass. For step three, you have no idea, but I'm really proud of step three. I actually ran step three through Natasha, and she thought that it was pretty good. Oh, yeah, that's that's funny. That's pretty good. But then the real test, uh, I ran it through Emerald, and Emerald said, oh, my God, Dad, that's so good. <laughs> good, okay. And coming from Emerald, that's like that's like a, a fresh rating from Rotten Tomatoes, yeah. a certified fresh rating from Rotten Tomatoes because I got Emerald to feel something emotionally. So that's really <laughs> you. So we're on to my favorite step, the last step in my three-step plan to help you blend in with Christian America. Step three, verbal cotton candy. Yes. We are talking verbiage here, and this is very important. I cannot stress to you the importance of this. This, your third and final step. The most important step to sounding like a Christian. We've talked about this on the show before. In fact, many, 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 many times before, but never in this form. That's actually a quote from Steve Martin when he hosted the Monty Python reunion special. (laughs) There was a Monty Python reunion special that Steve Martin hosted, and I I memorized it as a child. Nice. And it was really good. He would say, like in the late 1970s, a comedy first Im- a comedy force emerged that was funny, zany, yet warm. Uh, a comedy force that changed uh, the face of comedy. They were wild. They were insane, but it, it was wild. It was insane, but most of all, it was funny. Yeah. Very funny. But enough about me. What about this Monty Python crowd? <laughs> well, some people like them, I guess. Six unbelievably talented and for- unforgettable guys. John, Paul, George, Ringo, Bob, and one other unforgettable guy. <laughs> and then finally, and then it's basically just like a clip show. And it's like some of this, some of these clips you have seen before. In fact, many, 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 many times before, but never in this form. And then finally, at the end of the special, it's like an hour and a half long. And then finally, at the end of the special, they go, Steve Martin goes, Monty Python, where are they now? Actually, they're in this cupboard, and he just opens a closet door, and all of the Monty Python guys are in there. You see them for, like, three seconds, and then he just closes the door on them, and that's it. (laughs) Sad, really. Good night. And then that's the entire reunion special. And as the credits roll, you hear, hear, like, the guys in there going, Steve, can you open the door? That's the whole part of the special. To see us again, Steve, please. It's really great, and I memorized it as a child. (laughs) So, uh, verbal cotton candy, we've talked about this before on the podcast, in fact, many, 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 many times before. Basically, Christians do words wrong. Okay. They get vaguely undefined concepts. Concepts, hazy terms, and vague descriptions, cutesy buzzwords that really don't mean anything concrete. And they talk about them as if they are literal, concrete, freaking, proper nouns that literally exist. Yes. For example, faith is defined as a strong belief in God. Oh, but the Christians, faith is a literal thing, like Tucson, Arizona, or the Olsen twins. Yes. Faith is a thing. 
an actual thing to them. But and they but, talk but let's be for real. Like other people talk about the Suicide Squad. But let's be for real. Nobody really believes in the Olsen twins. True. True. It's like if I started talking about B-movies as if I thought B-movies were an actual person. Yeah. That's talking like a Christian. You get these vaguely defined buzzwords and you mix them up into indecipherable gibberish that don't really mean a goddamn thing as long as it sounds good. Okay. So like a Christian comes up to you and starts talking nonsense and you have to agree with it no matter how crazy it sounds. Like someone comes up to you and it's just like, let me tell you something, Bunny. When you feel the fire of the word, that's the spirit signing the covenant of peace. Mm-hmm. And as a normal non-Christian, your first instinct is to go, whoa, slow down there, Amadeus, because you just got your verbal diarrhea all over my fucking face. <laughs> that, that didn't mean anything. But no, you just have to say, uh, amen, amen. And you just have to unleash your own barrage of verbal diarrhea. The way that I've explained it before on the podcast, I liken it to a steak made of cotton candy. Okay? Like, uh-huh. like you get cotton candy and then you like mold it into the shape of a steak. And then you go, oh, a steak. Look at this. This is in the shape of a steak. This must be a steak. And then you bite into it, and it, it just crumbles in your mouth because it's it, it doesn't have anything inside. There's mm-hmm. no meat to it. There is no substance. Yes. It's just cotton candy in the shape of a steak. That's Christians and how they use words. <laughs> so I actually have a list here Okay. of uh, 25 different words. Okay. That you can use. And it's really great because it's kind of like a Mad Lib, like a Christian religious Bible Mad Lib. You just get these words that really don't mean anything, and you put them together in a way that sounds Christian. For example, bunny. Bunny. Yes. Bunny. The glory of redemption is the will of the Lord's light. When you feel the spirit, when you feel the faith, the fire inside... That is the word made flesh, and that brings blessings. But you can't have those blessings without fellowship, and fellowship is what leads to revival. We need revival because that's the only way that we'll get through persecution into deliverance. That's the rock of the word. (laughs) Now, I have no idea what I just fucking said, but that's the most Christian-sounding thing I've ever said. Yeah, yeah, and I completely agree. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that one, though. Oh, it's great. It, it, I, I haven't actually said a thing. It's like a slippery verbal judo. Here's a good tip. Here's a pro tip for you, okay? Farm analogies. Farm analogies. Because, Bunny, you've got, you, you've got to plow the fields of persecution in order to receive the harvest of redemption. Yes, Maxwell. I'm like on a roll and you keep interrupting me, but what is it that you're saying, Maxwell? Can can we get to what I want to tell you guys? You're just dying for your own podcast. Yes, Maxwell? I found a diamond, a mineral. You found a, a mineral. Look at you with the big words. Um, you found a mineral. What is that? It's a mineral diamond. Maybe if you try really hard, you won't find a mineral. You'll find a maxeral. <laughs> that would be a bigger, that would be a bigger mineral. Mineral is a smaller maxeral. What mineral is it? A diamond? A di- it's, it's a diamond. Mineral. Where do diamonds come from? Uh, caves. Caves. Yeah. Okay. The, the sweat of oppressed people is what I would go for there. Yeah, this is how they get diamonds. I thought I told you this before. Uh, they get coal, oh. and then they stick it up the president's butt, <laughs> and then that turns it into a diamond because it's so tight. No, but I just no. blew Maxwell away. Daddy. Yes. <laughs> that doesn't how diamonds get made. Then how are diamonds made, Maxwell? Well, if you crush coal, black, black coal, diamonds get burned. Diamonds get burned. 
humans get born, but they lied. They they come from caves. They come from caves. Okay. Yeah. So not from coal. No. Oh, good, because I did not want to crush coal because coal is amazing as Jughead on Riverdale. <laughs> what? We're talking about we're talking about uh, the Sprouse twins and how one of them is Jughead on Riverdale, which means you know that eventually Jughead's gonna have like an evil twin. Or he's going to have some weird nightmare where he visits himself. Because they, because you cannot just hire one twin without no. using the twins later. It's impossible. I really, funny, I really need my own podcast. Uh, 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 not, not yet. Okay, you're not there yet. Yeah. Well, but maybe one day, okay? Well, how, why isn't the... I don't know where CM Punk and the lava guy went. You should go look for them. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, I was talking about the Rock of Deliverance, Bunny. Yes. The Rock of Deliverance. In order to get that, you have to go through retribution. And what is retribution? There's retribution in accepting the spirit. And the spirit is dominion. But what's dominion? Dominion is found in the blessings of family. And family is what gets you to grow in your commission. And what is the commission? The commission is the faith of the word. Yes. The faith of the word in the spirit made flesh in the light of the Lord. A lot of things are in. A lot everything's in when you're doing the crazy Christian verbal judo. <laughs> There's fellowship in the blessings. And where do you find the blessings? In the light. And that's how you get the abundance. Because the abundance comes from the will of the glory of the grace of the great commission that comes from the word of the spirit made flesh in the harvest of rejoicing in the Lord. <laughs> I didn't say a fucking thing there. No. No. But, it but you said it beautifully. Thank you. Thank you. You've got to accept dominion in your family to grow in fellowship. That's how you get the foundation of righteousness. The foundation of righteousness is in the word and in the book and in the ministry. You need ministry in order to get the glory of the spirit of the grace of the word. That's the fire in the blessings of the light. And you'll only get the, the light. By the persecution. Always use persecution because Christians are the most persecuted people in the world. Yes. They're just so persecuted. What are you looking for, Bella? They're right there on the table. Like right there in the middle of the table. Yeah. Bella's looking for the wipes, but she can't wipe away the sins of the flesh. The only way to wipe those are from the righteousness that's found in the foundation of revival. We need revival. We need revival. You only get revival from the book, and the book is the fire of the blessings of the will of the light of the grace of the word of the spirit made flesh in the foundation of righteousness. <laughs> praise the Lord! No. Praise the Lord! No. I said praise the Lord, Bella. No. You know what? Bella is not praising the Lord. Why? The because of the materials, the wickedness, <laughs> the sinfulness. Okay, let me oh. Oh, let me Don't. see if I could take a crack at this one. This one's going to be hard, and and and, and no. you and you've kind of slam dunked yours, which isn't going to make it any easier. So let's see. Yeah. <clears throat> Trying to get filled with the Holy Spirit to to, to be able to do this. I've got a cheat sheet. I've got a list of 25 nonsensical Christian terms. You can plant a seed. Amen. But if you plant that seed in the belly of the beast, all you're going to accomplish are things that are of this world. Oh, amen. You brother. need to plant your seed on the banks where the water or life flow. Because it is only in that mud and sludge that that <laughs> holy dirt 
that brings forth good fruit. And, and lions and lambs lay down together in non-sexual ways. Preach on, brother. Preach on. Yeah, I maxed out right there. Oh, that was good. I, now. I, 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 I went to sex too early. That's what yeah, happened. Yeah. Now, now here, I, it, I thought that this part may come as a, 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 a difficult one for you. <clears throat> so, so I wrote you some outs. Okay. Okay. Now, it is possible, however unlikely, that despite following my patented three-step plan to the letter, that you might still find yourself in a pinch, in trouble, in desperate need for a way out of a conversation with a Christian. So if you're in need of an escape from a conversation with a Christian, have no fear, my friend, because once again, old Steve-O has you covered. Here are two tips to get out of a conversation with a Christian in a pinch. If it, we're talking, we're talking a, a, a real emergency situation here. Mm -hmm. Here are two ways to get out of conversation with a Christian. Okay. Number one, Bible stories. Bible there's, stories. There is a freaking bajillion Bible stories, and no one knows them all. Even the freaking Pope doesn't know all of the goddamn Bible stories out there. So if you are in a tight spot verbally with a Christian and you're looking for a way out, here's what you do, okay? You start talking about a Bible story to distract the Christian. If you don't know one, that's fine. Here's what you do. You come up with a name of a really shitty kid you know. <laughs> because chances are said shitty kid comes from a conservative Christian family. So think of a kid you hate and okay. then pair up that shitty kid name with a person, place, or thing. It doesn't even matter if the story is real or not, as long as you have confidence. Because if you have enough confidence, then the Christian will panic. And because appearances are key to an American Christian, they will have no choice but to pretend to also know your made-up Bible story. Here's an example. Mm -hmm. uh, the faith of spirit is the word made flesh offering you deliverance and retribution from the sins. It's just like the story of Joshua and the beggar leper. You know the story of Joshua and the beggar leper, mm -hmm. the beggar leper. Bunny, of course, you know that Bible story. Oh, yes. Joshua and the beggar who was also a leper, the beggar leper. Uh -huh. That's fun to say. That is fun to say. Beggar leper. Oh, well, no, I'm getting him confused with the ex-leper. Oh, no, no, that's the ex-leper. Well, you do know the story of uh, Jalen and the donkey in the field. Of course, everyone knows that Bible story. Yes. The story of Cadence and the monkey. <laughs> Jesus said that it, it, when he was in the fields mm -hmm. with the poor man. Honey, you know the story of... I did not hit her. You know the story of uh, Jaden and the crocodile. Yeah, yeah, sure. Classic Bible story. Uh-huh. Yeah. Which Bible are we... Oh, you haven't King, read King James. You haven't read. Version? You haven't read the 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 book of. Uh... Can you go get your sister? No, wait a second. She right. doesn't know it. No, I, I do. Can't I believe do. You she know doesn't know it. Um, oh no, no, okay. no, 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 no! I believe I heard that you do not know it. I think this is a little too late to be trying to recant that now. I don't know it. I. You call yourself a Christian? You call... yeah, really? Christian. How do you defile our tabernacle? By not knowing that story of of Jaden and the monkey, the gold Jayden monkey, the I believe it was. Sir. And the crocodile. Jaden and, and the crocodile. The crocodile. Uh, because I don't claim to be part of your religion. Yeah. Okay, you're not helping me. <laughs> right there, they will lynch us. That's it. Okay. Yeah. That that you oh, you, no. you just blew your cover, oh, Tasha. Oh, I'm white. I'll be fine. Yeah. But I will not. I need to fake some Christianity. You, Max and Bella might have issues. Yeah. So this is where I'm they sorry. all turn and point at you and go. <laughs> and they all stop what they're doing. And all over town, they look in your direction and start approaching. Yeah. What about the story of Talon and the money lenders? 
<laughs> That's another uh, classic Bible story. What What about the story of Credence and the Clearwater? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're just making shit up now. <laughs> like, like, uh, what's your favorite Bible story, Bunny? My favorite Bible story is the one about the three billy goats. Yes, amen, amen. I, mm -hmm. of course, also know that one. That one was my favorite as a child. And and how the one billy goat, that one billy goat who was just too proud to pray. Okay, yes. too proud. Yes. And crossed oh, oh. the bridge and was eaten by a troll. Yeah. And the second yeah. billy goat was too black to pray. Because I they, they, it was one of them black sheep. Too yeah. black Amen. to pray and went and crossed the bridge and was eaten by a troll. Oh. Amen. And the third one said, fuck that. Sorry, sorry. No cursing in the Bible. So it actually said, fuck a thine. Nice. Nice. That said, was a good save. Fuck a thine. And that Billy Goat prayed and crossed that bridge and was slaughtered on the other side by the farmer. Oh, amen. Yes. Amen. Because now the yeah. farmer, of course, is Jesus. So that just, you know, doesn't really mean that he killed the goat or anything. He was just, you know, taken away up into heaven by being slaughtered and gutted and roasted on a spit. Um, but but it wasn't the troll. That's the point. Yeah. So So here's another tip for you to get out of a conversation with a Christian. This one I'm really proud of. Step two, likening yourself the hell out of there. <laughs> this is a real smooth move if you're trying to get out of a conversation with a Christian and you're just in too deep. You're in too deep and you need to get out of there. Simply liken what you're saying with a different topic. But here's here's the here's the key. It needs to be a topic that will distract a white American Christian away from the Bible and onto another topic free from boring religious crap. It's important to note that this is a last ditch, no other choice. It's a Hail Mary play, okay? Yeah. Because in order for this to work, for this to really work, you need to ex you need to change the subject to another incredibly boring ass topic that vanilla ass boring as hell white christians would like that one i have that one i have immediately yeah for example when the spirit blesses you with the abundance of fellowship and the glory of retribution well it's like hunting <laughs> it's like hunting you don't just go into the into the forest and start shooting no you have to prepare what do you think about hunting <laughs> Boom, you are out of that conversation. The good part is that you've successfully distracted the Christian, uh, like shaking keys at a baby. Yes. However, the bad part is that, boom, you're now stuck discussing hunting with a Christian, and that's you. Yes, yes. I was thinking more along the lines of, did you see the way the Lord blessed the Broncos last Sunday? Nice, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It has to be a topic that your typical vanilla Christian would love. Topics include various sports, camping, Black Lives Matter, crockpots, golf, pickup trucks, and the new iPhone. Mm -hmm. Can you think of anything else that white Christian Americans would like? The red Starbucks cup. Hmm. Oh, yes. Good job, Emerald. The red Starbucks cup. That's a good holiday yes. way Yeah, to get away from... Uh, this is one that 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 you couldn't do for a while, but is coming back. American Idol. American Idol, okay. American Idol, or any one of those type of shows. Oh my goodness! Did you see how Bachelor, good Rents Priebus was at Bachelor. Dancing with the Stars it. last night? The Bachelor and the Bachelorette. Yes, The Bachelor and the Bachelorette. Bachelor. You were yelling that one. I was. Jesus. <laughs> Bachelor sucks. <laughs> 
what other things do uh, vanilla ass uh, basic uh, Christian fish, bitches fish, fish, house hunting? That's good. Uh, basically any, basically any like uh, like any one of those shows on one of those home networks. Yes. The HCG network. Yeah. What? What is it? I believe it, is that what's called HCG or HTG? H something. H H G G T V. Mm hmm. H G H G I think Home and Garden. Yeah, I thought it was H G T V, but you know we, we would go to Dwayne and Lawrence and they'd always have the the station oh on God, yes. to With to like twins? yeah I with like the twins. And I love the, the twins. Have we seen fucking the hate third them. Brother? <laughs> yeah, they have a third no. brother. His name is uh, Clarence, and they keep him locked in the basement. Oh, there you go. That has to be it. Because it's just the twins. They don't have another brother. Fuck okay. you. <laughs> I think it's HGTV. No, that's fuck you, Steve. God damn it. That's what I said. No, it's not HGTV. That was um. Home and Garden Hi. Television is what it stands for. Hi. You know, I'm just gonna look it up. I have, I have the internet that exists. Oh, Property Brothers is what it's called. Property Brothers. No, that's but, but but here's here's the reverse of that. So we've got all of these things that are like white Christians. Like, how would you tie it to the Bible, though? So so here's a good one. Here's oh my God, a good one. The gardening. No, no, here's a good one. When 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 you are blessed with the light of the glory of the grace of the redemption of forgiveness in the commission of dominion no, over right. the HGTV. spirit. It's like the property brothers. You need to know. <laughs> you need to build a foundation Wait, for a house. You can't just start building. Oh my god, there's two Apparently, twins like, and then there's like an the animated game. twin. <laughs> That's, That's like an Adam, anime um, version Adam, of one of the twins. The, the gay singer guy, Jesus Adam Christ. something. Levine. Yeah. That's like. Yeah. Wow. Jesus Christ. The, yeah, there's a third property brother, what and he looks fuck? like. um. I love I him in Yuri on Ice. Nope, that's a different oh, shut up. Hey. I love him in Yuri on Ice. He's amazing. He's such a great. Fuck you. He does the. Fuck you. He does like anything like that. He does the triple sow cows amazingly. <laughs> well, I mean, you can tell they're brothers, but Jesus Christ, I was not expecting that. <laughs> so the property brothers featuring my chemical romance <laughs> nice nice mci mci oh they have an mci oh r mcr that's like my ami yeah 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 that's amazing i'm so, sorry i didn't mean to no it's okay the show gets hijacked sometimes it just happens now here's here's the best part. Here's the best part. Another way to another easy way to deflect a Christian's conversation is just mm -hmm. to keep with you a handy dandy enemies list. Yes. Okay. And I don't think I need to tell you, but Christians have a ridiculously long and ever growing list of enemies. Yes. <laughs> including, but not limited to. People who drink, people who do yoga, abortionists, scientists, mm -hmm. people who read Harry Potter, people who read <laughs> rappers, Democrats, Kardashians, gays, mm -hmm. pot smokers, Wiccans, left-handed people. Yes. People who play Dungeons and Dragons. This is a new one I recently learned. Captain and Tennille. Yes. Oh. Lord of the Rings. All fast food. That's not Chick-fil-A. Mm -hmm. Astrologists. Obama, Hillary, Bernie Sanders, Colonel Sanders. Yes. But I'm still I'm still weirded out that there's like 20 different Colonel Sanders now. Am I I'm not alone in this, right? <laughs> I, no, I, I am, and that Rob Lowe is one of them I find very yeah, frightening. Yeah, Rob Lowe is one of the Colonel Sanders. Really weird. And then what's his name? Tan guy. I keep forgetting his name. Who what? And Tan guy, the tannest man alive. George uh, Hamilton? He was, he, yes, George Hamilton. Yes, he's, he's one of them, too. No, he's not. He can't still be alive. Nope. He is, and he's like, hello, I'm the extra crispy chicken. And he's all fucking brown because he's so super no, incredibly stupid tan. I, 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 I might have to see that. He's got to yeah. be like 300. Yeah, no, he's, he's still totally alive, and he's one of the freaking colonels. It's weird. 
Uh, butchers, bakers, candlestick makers, fornicators, mm-hmm. vegans, Vulcans, Romulans, Muslims, mm-hmm. sodomites, Satanists, staplists. Those are people who work at staples. Yes. People who touch themselves, people who think about themselves, people who think yes. are enemies of Christians. Here's a weird one. Actor David Spade. <laughs> well, look, sure they have a case for that one. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, they do have a case of that one. Angelina Jolie is Ange- a good one. Angelina Jolie. Like, who does she think she is? Saving kids from foreign countries? I mean, we have kids here in America, okay? They need help, too. I don't know, because for Christians, it is a popular thing to, like... Not all of them. I adopt. I adopted. Uh, I adopted a foreign child. This is TikTok. No, those are the those are the self righteous uh, moms that what are called. Okay. Those are the self righteous moms and Christians who are like, I'm proving to my congregation that I'm a better person than they are by yes. collecting a black. Yeah, <laughs> the blacks that are worse off than I am. Yeah, less I fortunate. Mean, I can help. I can yeah. help, and let me go grab a little Asian baby. For so many, for so many, for so many white Christian Americans, uh, adopting a foreign child is basically a different version of having a Chihuahua in their purse. Yes. Yeah. Here's my sons, Jacob. It's like a, Joshua what was that and Tyrone. Sandra Bullock. That's probably where they got the idea. The Blind Side. The Blind Side. Blind the Blind. Side. Yeah. The Blind Side. Blind Side. Yeah. The Blind Side. Ty- oh, Tyrone, why don't, why don't you go ahead and put the groceries in the back of the car yeah. for mommy? And and let me tell you how Jesus told me how to, to adopt this small black child. Okay, but see, and here's the thing, just like the movie with Santa Bullock, when these kids grow up and they're successful, they graduate school, high school, they graduate college, and they get a career, a decent career, what their parents, their adopted parents consider a a stand-up job, a stand-up career, yeah. something yeah. that's um, wholesome yeah. and American. They take all the credit. Like, them kids had nothing to do with it. Like, seriously? These motherfuckers are the ones sitting in the school doing all the fucking work. I you loved, just adopted them. I loved how you just said them kids. <laughs> that up. was so good. That was so good. Like, I say y'all and I don't realize it. And, like, how do you... You can carry around a Bible and then... Yeah, carry, I'm going to start carrying around the Bible. I'm going to, like, cut the inside of the Bible and just, like, keep, like, some alcohol in there, you know? But, but no, I think it would just be safe for me to carry a Bible. I, I, well, you might want to keep a gun in there because these people, you know, what if all of this fails? Yeah. You know, you yeah. still need a fallback position. Yeah, and you sometimes you just got to pop a cap in a Christian ass. Yeah, yeah. Keep your gun in there. So we're still on our uh, ridiculously long and ever-growing list of enemies of Christians. Feminists, Jews, gamblers, including people who know how to hold them and how to fold them. Okay? Scientologists, that one I'm down with. Yes. That one I'm down with. Um, Kabbalah, is that even a thing anymore? Is is that is that Mental? still... No, oh, it's, a, it's a thing. It's just not popular. It's not in vogue anymore. I just don't hear uh, Madonna talking about it as much, I guess. Yeah. Um, people from New Jersey. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, people who swear. You know what? You know what? Um, um, can we do a little swear circle? Sure. Let's, let's do a little swear circle. I'll go. I'll go first. No. Shit burger. Mm-hmm. Okay, Cunt lapper. Nice. Uh, Emerald, do you want to get in on this? Do you want to get in on our square circle? Come on. Come on. Just just let out a little one. Come on. Just a little one. Just do a little one for the podcast. Okay. Cunt puncher. Cunt puncher. Nice. Cunt puncher. It's okay. There's not, a, there's not a rule. There's no rules in a square circle. Okay. Well, it's total freedom. Darn. Okay. Um, holy fucking shit, my Christ. What's your fucking language? Oh my God, Emerald just cussed. Oh my God. Oh my God. That is way... 
Over the line! Over the line, Smokey. That's a foul. <laughs> Catholics, Freemasons, buy two, get one Freemason, and buy one, get one half off Masons. All of the Masons. Yes. Bogo Masons. Money lenders, Star Wars, people who think all minorities, and this is a weird one, former MTV News host Kurt Loder. <laughs> the list goes on and on every day Christians in America are discovering new and exciting things to be all pissy and self-righteous about and well, you can uh, use that to your advantage uh, if you want to quickly escape a conversation with a Christian again Kurt Loder I, I can kind of see that one because he was dead for most of the time that he was hosting MTV News absolutely absolutely it was weird because you would watch MTV and there were all these colorful characters and and all of these fun people and then mm-hmm. MTV News I'm Kurt Loder and and like, like he was the one with the zombie syndrome mm-hmm. yes yeah yes and you yeah. and you know yeah. what you know what that does that just takes glory from the Lord exactly mm-hmm. yeah because so, for a Christian everything is a war and everyone is against you yes. So mentioning anything on this ever-expanding Christian list of enemies is basically akin to throwing steak in a lion's den. Yeah. Or, or because we're a film podcast, throwing a nedri in a raptor enclosure. <laughs> so if push comes to shove and you are trapped with a Christian, the easiest way out is to basically, like, um, you need to yield the grace of harvest and rejoice in the spirit of the retribution of the Lord and grow your own grace and forgiveness in the will and the glory. Say, hey, fellow Christian, what's your thought on Muslims? <laughs> Boom. Rant explosion. That's a rant NATO. A rant NATO. Yeah. Congratulations, my friend. You just set a Christian on fire. <laughs> It is that easy. Target. What are your thoughts on Target bathrooms? <laughs> you just started a Christian talking for 25 minutes. Mm-hmm. Good job. Mm-hmm. That easy. Well, people, we have reached the end of our shared learning experience. Now, you are fully equipped to both talk like a Christian and to escape talking with a Christian if you need to escape the verbal clutches of biblical boredom. I hope this has been fully edutainmentational for you. Yes. I am Reverend Steve and for Bunny, we hope that you will join us again for more offensive filth with the Pope on Film podcast. That is a cut on that debt and it is fucking gold. <laughs> <laughs>